Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, and dzień dobry, as we say in Poland. This year, the Fulbright program celebrates the 75th anniversary. One of the ways in which we are joining the celebrations is by organizing monthly webinars. This month, with the main theme, Advancements and the Words. The title of today's webinar is U.S. Fulbrighters in Conversation, Fulbright Poland Grants for Students. My name is Paulina Kubelis, and I am a program officer for American students. My two colleagues from the Fulbright Commission in Poland are here with me today. Let me welcome Justyna Maziarska Lesis, a program officer for English teaching assistants, who will help us with questions from the audience, and Aleksandra Szaniawska, a promotion and new media officer, who is the organizer of this webinar. We are so happy to welcome so many participants today. I would like to welcome Fulbright advisors at US universities and colleges, university representatives who advise students on study abroad opportunities, as well as potential candidates who are interested in the Fulbright program opportunity. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and it will be available on our YouTube channel. You can type in your questions in chat throughout the meeting and we will address them during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. At Fulbright Poland, we offer two types of awards for US students. We offer 10 English Teaching Assistant Awards and 10 Open Study Research Awards per year. English assist Teaching Assistant Awards are granted throughout the competition offered to students and alumni of US higher education institutions to co-teach and teach practical as and specialized English language classes in Polish higher education institutions. Study research awards are open to students and alumni of US higher education institutions to conduct research projects at higher education institutions or research institutes under the supervision of an assigned mentor at the host institution. We are currently recruiting students who may begin their grant on October 2022. But before I introduce our wonderful speakers, I would like to take you for a virtual journey to Poland. Let's watch our brand new promotional video, Fulbright Poland, Home Away From Home. If you're a student, you can decide to stay home or go abroad. If you decide to go abroad, you can choose what everyone else is choosing or go for something different. If you go for something different, you may go to Poland. If you go study in Poland, you may spend your days on campus eating pierogi, but you may also explore. And if you explore, you may see this or that or those. If you see those, you may want to try those. If you try those, you may meet some people. If you meet some people, you may actually fall in love with her or him or them or this. And if you fall in love, well, maybe you consider making Poland your home. Make Poland your home away from home. Fulbright Poland, home away from home. Thank you, Alexandra. Well, I can assure you that at Fulbright Poland, we do our best to make our Fulbrighters feel home on their grounds in Poland. As you may know, Fulbright program and its participants have an impact in many fields. The Fulbright experience also has an impact on participants' lives, their careers and personal development as well. We are welcoming four of our Fulbrighters who will talk about the Fulbright experience in Poland and how it has impacted their professional and personal development. I'm pleased to introduce Bumi Dalia, who is currently a graduate student in Education Policy and Management program at Harvard Graduate School of Education 
and a program coordinator for college and career readiness at Seattle Public Schools. She was a Fulbright English teaching assistant in Poland at the University of Rzeszów in 2018-19. James Jung, who is currently a senior research associate at Dewpoint Therapeutics and an incoming MBA candidate at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. He was a Fulbright, Fulbright US student researcher uh, from two, uh, 2019 to 2019 at Jagiellonian University. Julianne Pereira, who is currently an international student advisor and designated school official for F1 international students and Fordham University. She was a Fulbright English teaching assistant in Poland at the University of Warsaw during 2014-15 and was awarded an extension for her Fulbright grant to mentor the incoming grantees. Finally, welcome to Steven Sapolsky, who is currently a vice president, global compliance and Goldman Sachs in New York, where he's also a member of the firm-wide LGBT network. He was a Fulbright US student researcher affiliated with the University of Warsaw during 2012-2013 academic year. And now I would like to ask Bumi to share her Fulbright story with us. It would be great to hear what valuable lesson you have learned. Thank you, Paulina. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, conversation. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I just want to start off with saying um, Fulbright Poland Commission, probably the best commission that is out there. So thank you all for organizing this and for giving me this opportunity to come and speak to uh, uh, potential grantees and uh, advisors uh, in the future to help uh, even more individuals experience the joy that is uh, being part of the Fulbright Poland um, family. So uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I want to quickly start off by sharing um, my story, uh, which I think is a little bit unique because I came into Poland and my constant joke to myself and fellow grantees was always that I did not pick Poland, however Poland picked me. And I say that because I was a um, an alternate for another country and was um, contacted by Poland, uh, Poland uh, Commission and was interviewed and I selected Poland. Um, mostly because I didn't know anything about Poland. Uh, and I was ashamed that I didn't know much about Poland uh, growing up in the Middle East and you know, uh, coming to the US, um, didn't have much context about Poland. And then so personally, when I was contacted by Justyna uh, through the commission to um, have this opportunity to join um, as an ETA, I definitely was like, oh, wow, uh, is this the right for me? But um, what really led me to say yes was, again, that unknown. And I'm um, just really always looking for opportunities to grow. And so I said, yes, within 10 days, I was in Poland uh, in October, 2018. And little did I know that it would change my life. It was a year of just ups and downs and the most brilliant experiences that I could have ever asked for. And um, I think one, uh, I would like to share one very personal story uh, in terms of my experience in Zeshev, uh, which is where I was the ETA uh, for the academic year um, that really showcases just the value that this experience brought to me, but also the potential that it has for a lot of future Fulbrighters um, hoping to experience the real Poland. Um, so quick context, uh, Zeshev is a, a, a in my mind, a small-ish town, but it's definitely called a city in Poland. I come from a big city in the uh, United States, but um, so it's in Southeast Poland and um, I was pretty much uh, removed from a lot of the other Fulbrighters because I was uh, one of the uh, only um, Fulbrighters that year uh, in Zeshev. Um, however, uh, the story is that my one of my mentors there uh, from the University of Zeshev, um, one fine night, she just like, hey, Bumi, do you want to come and, you know, join me for this party that I'm going to with a colleague? It's her birthday party. I, you, you know, get to experience Polish culture and just meet uh, some of the 
uh, people who are uh, here natives of Jeshu, I was like, sure, why not? Uh, little did I know that I was walking into this unique party that happens every single time a Christina in Jeshu has a birthday party. It was like this entire group of 60 Christinas who were getting together to have a party. And it was just something unlike I've ever experienced before. And it was, um, and I was hanging out with 60 plus year old women who were celebrating the, their birthday and bringing together this entire community that they had formed over the years. And so it just really showed me the value of family and community and culture that they had in that one night um, that I experienced. And they just, welcomed me in with open arms. They didn't know me, they didn't speak English, and I was still able to like, you know, just engage with them, have a fun night of dancing, um, and, you know, just enjoy uh, Polish food. Um, so it really, and this was a little bit earlier on my grant around like November, um, so I was still brand new. I'd missed the orientation for uh, Fulbright Poland um, for all of the incoming grantees, and so that was my, my, um, coming into the Polish society and really being welcomed within um, Zeshuv through that community. And over time, I mean, of course, there were, as a Fulbrighter, um, quickly learns there are always ups and downs and we all had our fair share uh, in terms of dealing with a new community, new culture, and just the culture shock that comes with it. However, one thing that I really took away was whenever um, I asked for help, it was there. Um, whether it was through my fellow grantees, uh, the Fulbright Commission, um, you know, uh, any opportunities that I wanted to, um, you know, tap into, those were provided. Uh, so for example, and James might share this, uh, towards the end of the grant, we were able to uh, come together, Fulbright uh, grantees and create a Mind Summit, which was uh, mentorship, inclusion and diversity, just to really think through how as Fulbright grantees, we can make sure that our impact um, continues and it's sustainable that programmatic changes happen um, to make it even better. Um, there's, and that is of course saying that the commission is near perfect, but uh, uh, we were just wanting to make sure that our um, time in Poland was not just limited that year and that uh, we were given um, the opportunity through the commission, they supported us in coming together, bringing all of our, the grantees together at the end of the year to have this um, uh, event organized to give them uh, honest feedback about how they can um, continue to support all of their future grantees. And uh, that is unlike anything that I've experienced in different organizations that I've been part of as a professional. Um, and so uh, I would definitely uh, I'd hold that very near and dear to my heart. And in fact, uh, a lot of that those experiences have translated well into my work as an educator. I came back to the US. I started teaching again at the high school level and then decided to pursue another graduate degree at Harvard right now uh, for education policy and management to continue uh, drawing on those experiences from Poland knowing that I could um, contribute to an organization, to a community, and bringing those experiences with me back home and um, hoping to make even more changes in the education se uh, sector. So uh, that's my Fulbright story. Uh, I have a lot more in terms of personal experiences, fun little tidbits that I can, of course, talk on and on about, but um, I will pause there and pass it on, pass it on. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Gumi, for sharing your story with us. And there is no Christina at the commission, but we have three Justimas. So maybe next time you'll come to Poland, you will be on the Justyna Names Day. So we'll have a party. And so now I'd like to ask James to tell us about his unique Fulbright story. And I'm so curious to know what was your favorite thing about Poland? Um, should I answer that question or should I do the, what we just did? Yeah. Yeah. Go on with you. Story. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll make sure to cover your question. Um, hi everyone. Thanks for having me here. I'm James. Uh, I was a Fulbright researcher, um, in Krakow from 2018 to 2019. Um, I guess just a brief background about myself. I was born in Korea and I moved to the States, uh, in 1999. Uh, grew up in LA, went to school up in New Hampshire, uh, studied bioengineering, and have been working in biotech ever since. Um, 
And essentially my journey to Poland was kind of random, but um, essentially like in the winter of 2016, I decided to go on a Euro trip, a short Euro trip, um, and was planning my itinerary and my Polish coworker highly recommended that I, I swing by. So given how easy it is to navigate across Europe, I said, sure, why not? Um, and I decided to go there. And I remember from history classes and things like that, I did learn a lot about the, like the culture and the geopolitical conflict. And once I was there, I started to kind of connect the dots and I saw a lot of similarities with uh, Korea and Poland in terms of um, all the conflicts during the wars and how um, their, their neighboring countries um, kind of affected or shaped the country um, that, it, that they are today. And once I made the connections, um, I decided that uh, it was a country that I kind of wanted to explore more. And uh, in my undergraduate days, I actually didn't have a chance to um, study abroad because of my, uh, my major. Some of the courses were only offered at certain terms. Um, so there was always that like desire to live abroad for an extended period of time. And I, I thought the Fulbright was a perfect opportunity for me to do that. Um, and so during my search, I was actually fortunate enough to find an advisor who was a Fulbright alumna herself. Um, so she had gone from Poland and done her postdoc at, at Stanford. And so during our initial conversation, I thought it was, I didn't even know about it until we started talking. And at that point, I felt like it was kind of like my calling and the, the uh, stars had aligned. Um, and it was on a project that I was pretty passionate about. It was on um, the pathogenesis of psoriasis because I've dealt with uh, skin, uh, skin issues in the past. Um, and I really didn't have to like think any more about that. Um, I knew that I had to apply to Poland. Um, and of course, like I'm a huge, I, I'm in the classical piano. I'm a huge Chopin fan. So it's, it was a no brainer for me. Um, and to kind of answer, uh, Paulina's question, uh, my favorite part about Poland, there's actually like not just one, but I mean, there's so many, um, ways I could go about answering that question, but. Of course, there's like the rich culture and the history, um, but at the same time, it was the people that I met um, that really shaped my overall experience. Um, so the Polish people were very, very like uh, inviting and welcoming, um, especially the people that I work with. They made sure uh, they made sure to invite me to birthday parties or group outings or Christmas dinners and things like that, and they really didn't have to because. You know, I was just a foreigner that was kind of plucked out and then dropped into their lab. Um, but I mean, they were very excited to practice English with me. They had me uh, edit their manuscripts, things like that. And that was a lot of fun. Um, and of course there was also that, that Thanksgiving dinner party that was hosted by Polish uh, Fulbright alumni in, in Krakow. And that was also very memorable. Um, and I guess the key differentiation between Fulbright Polska and the other, I guess, uh, other countries is that it's much smaller in size. So you actually get to know a lot of your uh, fellow cohort members really well. And that's one of the key takeaways. Like I've formed so many strong friendships and we, we still keep in touch um, to this day. And that kind of like segues into what I wanted to say next about like life after Poland. Uh, so, I mean, I love my time in Poland. Of course, like as an Asian American uh, in Poland, I stuck out like a sore thumb, but at the same time, it's kind of like, you're, you're probably the first Asian uh, American that most of the, most of the uh, Polish people will ever encounter. Uh, and that was pretty evident when I uh, did American Day at Częstochowa, when I walked into an auditorium full of 200 Polish high school students, and they were just confused because they were told that an American was going to come. And when I stood on the stage, I didn't really fit that mold. And we started talking and we, we realized that we had a lot more in common. And uh, I guess it kind of like broadened their perspectives in a way. And I was happy to kind of contribute to that. Um, and right now I'm actually a board member of the of, um, Fulbright Massachusetts chapter. 
Uh, I've been involved for about two years now. Um, I know COVID kind of halted most of the operations, but I did help plan some of the social gatherings and uh, Friday night, uh, like pub meetups and stuff like that, which has been a lot of fun to just talk about, uh, talk to other full writers who also lived abroad. Um, I've also been kind of like talking to random prospective students. And I know like Paulina has connected me with the, um, with the student who actually got the grant. So um, it was great just talking to them about my experience, like what they're looking for. And not only that, but I got some of my cohort members together. We liked her enough to do like a mock interview for her, um, which was a lot of fun just because it was kind of like a excuse to have a mini reunion. Um, and yeah, like after, so I've been working in biotech uh, at a small startup and I'm planning to go to business school in the fall. Um, but if there are any prospective applicants in the, in the chat right now, feel free to reach out to me. Um, happy to answer any questions and not gonna talk for much too longer, um, but I do have some pictures that kind of some of my uh, favorite pictures from my Fulbright days. Um, if I can get it to work. Uh, can you guys see it or is this the right uh, okay. picture? Okay. Yeah. So this is basically, this was. Oh, James, we cannot hear you. We can the see castle. you. Oh, we can hear you. You may continue. Yeah. Um, Oh, hi. Sorry, my Zoom is, it's uh, lagging, but yeah. I think you can share only one photo with us today, but that was Krakow as we recognize, at least some of us. All right, my, uh, my Zoom is acting up. I apologize. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go by, I'll go through it really fast, but this was, a, this was a picture. We went on a group trip to Latvia and we're just being silly. And that's kind of like what makes the memories, all the, the silly memories. Um, this was uh, during Christmas time, Christmas markets. My parents and my brother came to visit, which was amazing. And had a lot of uh, pierogi and mulled wine and all the, all the good stuff. Um, this was in Częstochowa when I did the, the American Day. It was to celebrate like the 100 years of uh, relationship between uh, Poland and the US, talked about uh, my experience uh, growing up in the U.S., as well as like my uh, my college experience, which they were particularly really interested about. And this is our prom pose um, at our graduation day. Uh, it's all our good friends. And yeah, it's one of the last pictures I took in in Krakow. Um, couldn't fall asleep, so I woke up at like 4:30. Decided to walk around. It was right after it rained. Got a beautiful picture of uh, Main Square. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, James, for sharing your story, your unique story. And I, I believe your Fulbright story continues. And I would like to thank you for being so open in. Um, and welcoming to our potential candidates. I know they can reach out to you for more information at any time. So thank you, James. And now I would like to ask Julian um, to share her story with us. And maybe you could tell us why was it worth for you to apply for a Fulbright grant to Poland? So, uh... Oh, what a loaded question. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, to introduce myself, everyone. Hi, uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Julianne Perayo. 
Uh, I'm originally from San Francisco, California, I'm currently located in New York City. I was a Fulbright ETA uh, English teaching assistant during 2014-2015 uh, in Bydgoszcz, uh, teaching English and music at Kazimierz Wielki University. And I received an extension to relocate to Warsaw to mentor the incoming ETA grantees for 2015-2016. Uh, um, and there I taught at the University of Warsaw in the Faculty of Applied Linguistics. So uh, choosing Poland as my Fulbright destination. Um, well, it's, it's always the question why Poland? It's, it's such a multifaceted and, and, and amazing question to ask because everybody has a story behind it. Um, and um, mine was informed by a number of different factors that sort of coalesced into, as uh, James uh, eloquently put it, you know, the stars aligned and uh, Poland, you know, became my destination. Um, when I had the opportunity to study abroad uh, in London uh, during my junior year in college uh, in undergrad, I befriended my coworker, uh, Ursula, uh, during an internship over there. Uh, and while she was over there, she was showing me um, uh, London. I was 20, uh, 20 years old, first time living abroad, was scared, didn't know how to use the Metro. And she took it upon herself to make sure I was okay. Um, she was an English woman with Polish heritage. And through our friendship, I learned about her love of art, um, music, poetry, and about her Polish heritage. Um, my friendship with Ursula really cultivated my fascination with Poland. And uh, I guess the enthusiasm in which she was sharing her experiences, uh, stories about her grandma, uh, really um, set an example of ambassadorship for me that uh, set me on this journey towards uh, choosing Poland as, as the place that I wanted to uh, to be. Um, and uh, like upon, um, you know, like having that experience, I, I knew I wanted to visit Poland. I had an opportunity to go with my parents on a religious pilgrimage in 2013. And I visited uh, the shrine of um, the Black Madonna of Częstochowa down in, in near Kraków in in the south and uh, around this time one one magical experience that happened was there were people of all ages grandmas um, babies uh, and their parents uh, all crammed into the space um, and I remember just sitting there and this little old lady just started to sing this song in Polish and it started to grow and there was this organic um, uh, you know, like sonic sort of uh, expression of artistry that so that just grew um, from that experience. Everybody seemed to know the words of the song. It was all in Polish, and uh, it it was so lovely um, to to be a uh, witness to that and that type of um, transformative phenom um, that sort of. Uh, phenomenon that occurred really became, um, you know, like a reason for why I chose Poland. Uh, when I think of Poland, um, uh, it's really a nation of stories. Uh, I was really interested in exploring intergenerational relationships and memory uh, during my time there. Uh, after college, I was working with Alzheimer's and dementia patients in music therapy. And so when I think about Poland and memory, there's this, uh, uh, the country itself has this real um, desire to, to um, remember things. I, I think of the, um, the streets and the signs, there, there are stories embedded in your surroundings and people are so willing to share those stories. Um, uh, highlights of my Fulbright grant. Um, when I was working with my first year students in Bidgosh for my first year, I uh, 
I worked with them to uh, create personal memoirs in English where they were interviewing their grandparents and parents uh, and then presenting it in another language. Um, and then I also got to uh, engage with the music department in Vidgosh to uh, lead a chorus. And so some of the things that I experienced in choosing Poland as my destination for the Fulbright became the inspiration for what I wanted to achieve in Poland. And so uh, many of the opportunities that presented themselves to me, um, you know, were an opportunity to create outreach opportunities. So uh, my second year when I had a chance to be a mentor to the fellow ETAs, I wanted to um, uh, be able to reach out to students in rural Poland and I wanted to showcase um, this ambassadorship that I experienced with Ursula. So, so during my time in Warsaw, I had the privilege of participating through um, partnerships with the University of Warsaw, um, the American Embassy, uh, Polish American Freedom Foundation, and Education USA's um, American Reporter Radom. And I did around uh, 49 educational outreach opportunities uh, there. It was just like uh, the sky's the limit with uh, the Polish American um, Commission. It was like, go and make your experience. And so I, I went full throttle with that. Um, you know? And I think uh, one important thing that I learned um, about myself during the grant was how important embodied learning um, is so indispensable. Um, the experiences uh, that you have with, you know, with people, the exchanges that occur are so important. Um, and Poland, uh, just in living there, taught me a new type of literacy uh, in which I learned to navigate different spaces and sort of acculturated to different, uh, you know, like climates, like in, in uh, as a 24 year old at the time, you know? And I found myself even applying more of my music majors performance emphasis in my experiences in Poland, learning how to connect with my students, singing songs with them. They used to teach me songs in Polish. Uh, they, they had the song called uh, which means get on a train, uh, go anywhere. And honestly, I took that and ran with it and said, I'm gonna do that with the educational outreach, you know? So get on a train wherever you like, don't care about the baggage or the ticket, you know? And so running with little instances like that uh, just really crystallized um, the sense of excitement that I had. Um, so when I think about life after the Fulbright, I uh, went on to pursue my master's degree in international ed development at Teachers College, Columbia University in New York. Um, I found myself engaging in similar outreach initiatives, uh, worked for the Institute for International Education um, and One World. So both nonprofits that help international students uh, come to the United States and have experiences. Um, and I wanted so much to give that experience back to any sort of international student who wanted to pursue uh, what what I think I had with the Fulbright and with Fulbright Poland. Um, now, after my experience with grad school, I work as an international student advisor and designated school official at Fordham University. I am with the Office for International Services to help about 3,000 uh, F1 international students maintain immigration compliance, and um, I hope to advocate for them with my work. So Fulbright and Fulbright Polska uh, really helped me foster the dialogues that I wish to, like, that I wish to facilitate as a practitioner. Um, it really helped me identify spaces in which I could do that, um, and spaces where I could be invited to really serve, um, you know, students who, who may want to pursue something. Um, beyond uh, their original context or, or wherever they were. Um, and I also think that it gave me an opportunity to apply uh, 
a lot of the interests that I had um, academically in a real time fashion and in a really human uh, fashion. So um, once again, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. And uh, thank you to all of my uh, Fulbright alums, my fellow Fulbright alums who are here. Uh, you're doing great work. And thank you Fulbright Kolska uh, for this amazing opportunity. Um, yeah. Dziękuję bardzo. Dziękuję, Julian. So it looks like your memories are still vivid, although you came to Poland a few years ago. Thank you for your story. So now I would like to ask Stephen to tell us how has Fulbright Grind impacted his professional and personal development? Stephen, can you share your story with us? I would be happy to. And you know, thank you to, to you, Alexandra, Justina, and, and everyone for, for being here and, and for my fellow panelists. It's, it's so nice to, to hear about your work and it's very inspiring and uh, I'm, I'm excited to learn more about it. So uh, if you couldn't tell by my surname, Szypolski, I do have Polish roots. Okay. Um, although I do consider myself fully American, I was born and raised here in the East Coast. I'm currently in New York right now, a nice, hot New York. Um, my parents were grand, my, my grandparents were Polish, and uh, because of this, I was always very interested in the region, the country, politics, etc. So, where I went to school for undergraduate at Georgetown, um, you know, there was one of only a few Polish and Russian, Russian Eastern European studies programs. So, I had the opportunity to learn Polish there, which is fairly good right now, but I'm always trying to, to practice. Um, and, and at Georgetown in DC, it's just a fantastic place to really immerse yourself in all things Poland, politics, Eastern Europe, etc. Uh, Georgian also, um, you know, has one of the, the preeminent uh, international studies programs for, for university students at SK Ha. So uh, I had the opportunity to study in Warsaw during my junior year at college. And long story short, I, I fell in love with the country, the people, and, and I really wanted to come back. So during my time studying abroad, I made a lot of connections, started to think about how I could get back to Poland in a research capacity. And you know the rest is history, basically from there. So that being said, I, I don't think it's necessary for anyone to have previous ties to the country to fall in love with the place, uh, or even to do a Fulbright for a year. Um, you know, th there there are so many things I love about Poland. So you know, excuse me for a couple of minutes when I go on and, and rant about all these great things. But uh, the people are so welcoming, as, as many people have noted already. Um, interesting, offer such a unique perspective about the world and their country and their region, and they're so patriotic. Um, I love that Poland's at a crossroads in a lot of ways, right? East and West, modern, future, liberal, conservative. And, you know, if you haven't traveled yet to Poland, it's one of the most beautiful places everywhere. Mountains, rivers, beaches, concrete, which I like a lot. Um, and, and, you know, I could go on and on forever. So during my research opportunity, I, I was a little bit focused on specifically what I wanted to do and, and was a little bit more independent in, um, you know, how I related to my cohort. Uh, I had the chance to engage with a lot of senior people when I was in Poland, a number of former presidents, ambassadors, leaders, parliamentarians, NGO members, right? And for me, that was just an amazing opportunity to make a lot of friends and professional connections. And some of these friends I even consider lifelong ones, and we keep in touch regularly to this, to this day, even though I did my Fulbright going on 10 years ago. Um, when I was there, you know, as James had, James had mentioned about the uh, American Day, it, there was a U.S. presidential election while I was there. So being able to witness this American history from a foreign perspective and participate in that, share my experience from, with students while I was there was a, a very valuable opportunity. Being able to represent yourself, your community, however you define your community to be, country, university, et cetera, is it's such a valuable experience. And I think the opportunity to step away from normal life and fully integrate into a country for such a long period is, is really important. And um, you know, for me, studying abroad for one semester was, was just not enough. Um, you know, other things about Poland, you know, also James had mentioned, I, I think it's completely possible to eat your body weight in pierogies and delicious Polish carbohydrates regularly. Don't go to Poland thinking that you're going to be on a diet or remain on one. It's, it's not going to happen. It's not encouraged. There is just so much good food. Um, but food, food aside, my Fulbright really helped me to secure an independence that I never really had before. It's one thing to be in a new country learning how to deal with your utilities bill, for example which in Poland is, is never easy and it's never fun, but um, it really teaches you how to rely on yourself 100% to take new risks, try new things, put yourself out there and meet new people. Um, and, and that's one of the great things about the Fulbright experience is it, it can be as adventurous or secure as you really want it to be. 
Um, and you know, my experiences with the new Fulbright Commission with Justina and others has just been fantastic. So I know there's a, a really tremendous uh, team behind you and, and new students who are looking, looking there. In terms of my life after Fulbright and, and the question regarding professional life, um, you know, when I came back from Poland on my Fulbright, uh, I returned to graduate school at Columbia where I focused on the region, spent an, a little bit of time in politics, um, wrote my thesis on, on things that uh, I, I started when I was doing my Fulbright research. Um, and, you know, even to this day, I still serve as chair of the alumni network at Columbia's Harriman Institute, which is a regional academic institute focused on Russia, Eastern Europe, and Central Asia. So that being said, I'm very passionate about providing opportunities to learn and integrate with the region. Um, you know, for example, you know, the region's art and artistic talent. I think there's such a unique group of artists giving a fresh perspective on life growing up in the region. And I think they've been underrepresented in a lot of forums. Um, Poland is, is a hub of innovation in a lot of ways, business, technology, sustainability. Um, so I'm personally always looking for ways to keep uh, a connection with the business in the region. Um, I've been at my current job in investment banking for about six years now. Um, and, and I've had the chance to integrate Poland and, and Fulbright into my professional life too. For example, uh, Goldman Sachs has an office in Warsaw that I've had a chance to work at a few times. Uh, I've been in global compliance for about six years in New York. And uh, as of next week, I'm gonna be taking up a new role uh, on, on the business side of things. So Fulbright professionally has been great, obviously because of the name recognition, but it, in my opinion, really helps you stand out for a number of reasons, irrespective of whether you did ETA or research. Um, you know, it, it teaches you about thinking in a new world perspective. How do you approach topics? How do you think about challenges? Um, obviously the language skills is a big plus too. Um, and then I think personally, right, I, I can't go a day without meeting a Polish person and me just wanting to get to know them, connect with them, understand where they're from, practice my Polish. Um, and, and I think that's one of the great things about Fulbright is this intercultural exchange, right? And even today, it's, it's more, more important than ever. So, you know, that being said, I, um, you know, encourage you uh, to connect with me on LinkedIn or the Fulbright team has my contact information. If you're a student who wants additional perspective on your application or research ideas, um, you know, if you're a faculty or university staff member who wants to, you know, talk about my background, my experiences, why your students should study in Poland, you know, on the Fulbright, uh, if you need experienced speakers with, with topics or, or opinions on the region, or, you know, anyone on this call who just wants to talk Poland, art, politics, sustainability, um, let's connect. But, um, you know, thank you all for, for listening to my experience and, and for having me on this panel. It's great to be here. Thank you, Stephen, for sharing your experience and your story with us. And now I would like to share your, um, ask you to share your advices. Mumi, you said that you have tips for potential candidates. Can you tell us a bit about this? Yes, absolutely. I do have just a quick note. There might be a, a guest visitor in, ter in terms of my cat. She's just <laughs> wanting to get my attention so she might hear some meowing in the background. But in terms of tips, uh, I'll echo what Stephen said in terms of independence. Uh, this is like Fulbright experience in general, living in a different country will pose a lot of challenges, especially if it's your first time abroad by yourself and there's no way to escape it. In fact, that is something that all future grantees should most likely invite. Uh, those are the opportunities and times when you truly find yourself, you truly learn how you can deal with difficult situations. So invite discomfort and challenge on a day-to-day -day basis um, and during your experience at the Fulbright or in a different country. But at the same time, know that risk-taking while an inherent part of a Fulbright experience, um, yes, but also that you have tremendous amount of support. Uh, the Fulbright Polska Commission is there to support you. Your fellow grantees are there to, you know, be a sounding board and just develop uh, these lifelong and meaningful um, friendships. So um, don't be afraid to take that risk and definitely be in the mindset of inviting risk and challenge. And James? What advice would you give to future applicants? Um, I guess do what I did. <laughs> do, um, do your due diligence. Look into why exactly you want to be uh, in Poland um, and whether it's a good fit for you and you're good for uh, Poland. Uh, reach out to 
me, for example, just like get a feel of what life is in Poland, talk about experiences. Um, I'm pretty honest, so I can just give you like the um, like my feedback, uh, things to look out for, things that you'll like absolutely enjoy. Um, and yeah, just uh, get involved in a project or start talking to advisors early. <clears throat> early in the process, especially if you're going for research, because that process can take a very long time. Um, so yeah, those are my tips. So Julianne, any advice to future applicants? Um, well, to add on to what uh, was said, uh, thank you, Fumi and uh, James, uh, you know, I would say uh, don't uh, be afraid to make your personal statement personal. Um, try to really, um, you know, like look into your own experience and see what type of unique skill sets and experiences you have that could uh, potentially contribute and, and uh, create um, an opportunity for you in uh, wherever you, you hope to, to go uh, with the full by grant. Um, and I'd also say, uh, you know, to, to concretize and solidify uh, your reasons for wanting to be in a certain place, um, how would you make those plans actionable in the space where you intend to pursue uh, the Fulbright? Um, and, and how would you like to contribute to those spaces if invited? Um, you know, I think that uh, just also when pursuing the Fulbright grant, um, it's, uh, you know, to, to sort of reiterate what other folks have been saying is uh, be, be comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, every day is, uh, an impro is an opportunity for improvisation. Um, and uh, that's from the very start of your, your application process all the way to the very end. Um, and I think rolling with the punches and, and allowing yourself to sort of fall into that intentionally will create a really meaningful experience for you um, as you pursue this opportunity. Um, also, you know, feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm here and uh, I know that any uh, grant alumni would love to talk uh, with you about your, uh, you know, their experience. Um, we're, we're here to help and, and we want to see you have these experiences. Uh, you know, it's, it's a really wonderful opportunity and we can't recommend it enough. Um, so, yeah. Steven, would you like to add something to this? Sure, I, I think, you know, what everyone said was already really um, relevant. I, I guess, you know, for me personally, I, I, my advice would be, you know, really put yourself out there going into the, the Fulbright, right? Like go in with an attitude of, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to, you know, pave my own path. So for me, that meant, you know, before I even arrived in Poland, I was messaging with NGOs that I wanted to volunteer at, right? Try something new, get, get involved with an organization that you wouldn't have the opportunity to do. Try and make a difference, really get to know your community, whether that's a big city like Warsaw or some of the smaller towns. Um, and also just don't be scared to, to go to a place with, you know, um, a, a, a path less traveled, right? You know, Warsaw and, and Krakow are amazing places, but there's some really, really interesting and amazing work mm -hmm. happening in smaller towns and in other relationships that are, um, that have their own story to tell. So yeah, I, I guess it was just take risks, um, put yourself out there and um, really get to know the people because it's, um, you know, if you're there for a year, it, it flies by, it, it really goes quick. So you really have to take advantage of, of every moment. So thank you so much for sharing the stories, very unique stories. And I think it's time for the questions now. We have a few questions and I think I can take one questions and add. There was a question about arts and projects we accept. So basically one year artistic internships projects are accepted. So candidates interested in pursuing an artistic internships are required to submit uh, together with the application. 
documents, a letter of admission, and which aside from the project objectives should list all the fees associated with the program. Um, Justina, can you read the next question? Um, sir, I'm just typing the answer for the questions which were asked by Michael and uh, going briefly through them. There is a question about language requirement in terms of do you have to know Polish? Well, it's uh, knowledge of Polish is not uh, recommended, but it's very helpful. So, uh, Bumi, Stephen, uh, you can just say that in everyday, uh, everyday life, it's very uh, useful to know at least some of Polish to uh, just uh, start at the beginning. So, it's not a requirement, but it's really useful and it's recommended. Um, another question uh, is about the project, additional projects for ETA. Well, uh, they may include or activities connected with uh, host institution engagement and project related to uh, local communities. So uh, conducting conver conversational clubs or presentation um, are welcome. Uh, perhaps our guest can add what other projects can be done by ETA, BUMI. Would you like to share some extra information on that? Sure, yes. Um, uh, I'll share more of the projects that I worked on. Um, of course, my application was very different, so uh, that caveat is there. But um, I was involved, like uh, a lot of my uh, fellow um, grantees here, or uh, alums have said, um, in a lot of, like, um, visiting of uh, local schools. So in Zhashev, uh, I was invited uh, to a lot of the elementary, middle, and high schools to just uh, talk with the students. Uh, there was a real um, uh, yearning for uh, engagement and one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations with uh, native speakers. So as an American grantee in uh, Poland, um, they're definitely looking for, especially as an ETA, uh, to invite you and uh, have conversations with their student, really um, provide an understanding of like authentic American culture, but also just uh, ways of engaging with or bridging those, um, you know, cultural uh, differences, uh, like how can uh, Polish students learn from an American grantee and vice versa. So there's, uh, there was that. Um, there was also um, a lot of conversation uh, clubs like Justina mentioned. Um, I worked at the University of Zhezhev where a lot of the medical students were looking for help with improving their conversation skills in English and so um, helping tutor them or just, you know, setting up evening uh, sessions like informal sessions over coffee uh, to meet with local students who are interested um, who tend to be uh, somewhat um, scared of talking in English with a native speaker, but really setting up a project where you can, um, you know, provide value in terms of actively engaging students to come and um, share their experiences, but also talk um, can definitely, definitely be valuable. And then any volunteer projects, um, um, that are allowed within the community. I know there are some um, restrictions that might uh, be in place as an American grantee, but um, yeah, there are definitely a lot of options. It really depends on what you want to gain out of your experience. Uh, for me, it was very much, um, I was invested heavily in teaching and mentoring. So that's, that's where I landed. Yeah, thank you very much, Bumi. Uh, Julianne, would you like to add something to what Bumi said? Um, sure. So in terms of extracurricular uh, activities or um, anything available in terms of engaging the community around you, uh, what's so nice about Fulbright Poland is you have a mentor uh, as an ETA and they can help you uh, find those uh, avenues or outlets in which you can contribute um, and then in terms of uh, working and and uh, engaging the students that you have in classes, um, you can uh, start your own initiative, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, creating a conversation club. Uh, you can, can do sort of like a grassroots style thing 
and and foster uh, something that can grow. Of course, you'd want to talk with the faculty there and talk with your uh, your mentor uh, at the university um, to to sort of guide you on how to do that operationally. Uh, there's also uh, opportunities that are uh, with foundations. So I've mentioned a few uh, during my time. I, I worked with the American Embassy in Warsaw uh, during my second year. Um, was part of their conversation club, and and you know the people there are so welcoming and and really really interested in in having uh, you speak. So so it's a wonderful chance to even meet the larger public. There's also the Polish American Freedom Foundation, uh, which allowed me to uh, seek uh, more of those rural opportunities. Um, you know, and, and they will place you in certain, certain areas or, or give you suggestions. Um, and you would be able to imbue your presentations with uh, the sort of inter, uh, interdisciplinary engagement that you would hope uh, to, to put into it. Uh, let's say if you have a certain concentration, I, I had a lot of music-based workshops, um, you know, and it, it ranged from high school to, and I think uh, my youngest was like around four years old. And and, uh, you know, with those kids, I, I bought a ukulele in Poland and I was singing with them. And, and you know, so it, it's really, you know, you, it's up to you to, to I think, uh, define the structure or define the, the thing that you'd want to create um, uh, in the space. And then you'd be able to see if it's feasible through different avenues, through organizations that are readily available. There's also uh, Education USA's American Corner Radom, and I know that they have a very uh, strong relationship with Fulbright Polska, so they're they're here. And uh, I did a three-day workshop on American spirituals and songs with them, and uh, you know it was it was really exciting to to go back and and uh, communicate with the students there. So, you know, I. I think if you have your interests, you have your academic uh, 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 focus and, and you want to include it in, in your conversations and to, to facilitate dialogue, it's definitely there. Okay, thank you, Julian, for your perspective. Right, do we have any other questions? Yeah, that was a question about um, GIS or systems. Um, any connections? I believe you ask about host institution. So I put my contact information here. So if you send me an email, I can share a number of links to the institutions that would deal with that topic. In the past, we have uh, we had like at least two, but scholar grantees in that field, in that specific field. I've shared our contact information. We are program officers, Paulina Kubelis and Justyna Maziarska. If you have any questions also in the future, please feel um, free to reach out to us by email. And thank you our guests for sharing their contacts as well. So you can find them uh, on our chat. Any other question we've missed? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, can you tell a little bit about the expenses, living expenses in Poland? Um, anyone would like to tell? I, I, I think it's... Um, the expenses are reasonable for that part of Europe. So would you like to have um, to know the, uh, the exact amounts for housing for a month and details? I'll be, um, I'll be happy to share this by email. But in general, in compared to other countries in Europe, I believe that um, the um, the fees and um, are reasonably inexpensive. So I think um, 
Mm. Anyone would like to add to this? It's um. It's <clears throat> it's very good, very reasonable, and um, your stipend will have you live very comfortably. Um, I don't remember the exact amounts, but it was. Yeah, I'll be happy to share with you the exact amounts of um, um, by email. Okay, uh, another question I have in mind was about uh, pursuing the capstone project. I, I'm enrolled in the GIS uh, program. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if it's going to be at all possible to pursue my capstone project at uh, uh, any of the universities of Poland. Uh, the, my question uh, goes to the, basically uh, to, you know, is there a connection between University of Maryland and any University of Poland so I can pursue my capstone project per se? Uh, I'm not familiar with any connection with that university, but um, I'll be able uh, to share like uh, contact information to universities uh, that would be potential a uh, host institution. Like um, you would need to reach out to them with your project statement and ask a question if that would be um, feasible for you to um, to carry on your project that you propose at the particular host institution because candidates are responsible for reaching out to host institution and submit a letter of invitation together with the application form so i what i could also do is to maybe pose your question to our fulbright alumni um polish fulbright alumni uh, who may specialize in that field. And that's uh, sometimes I try to connect a uh, Fulbrightist from US with Fulbrightist from Poland. And if you email me specifically the topic of your research, I could maybe post your question to our board and share and ask our Polish Fulbright alumni to reach out to you, if that would be a good idea. You have my email address here, so I will expect an email from you tomorrow so that we can exchange contact information and discuss your project further. Thank you. Well, I think... It's... Well, there are no questions on our chat, so... There is, uh, we are just about the, well, we just run out of, the, of time, but there is still some uh, minutes left if you would like to ask last questions, our guests about their stories, their tips or uh, anything, please do so. If not, Paulina, I think. Yeah, so thank you for joining us today. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, our Fulbrighters, for sharing your stories. And thank you for being so supportive. And I think this will result in a great number of applications this year. So hopefully we have, um, we'll be receiving a lot of applications from you as students this year. And please do feel free to reach out to us by email in the future at any time you have any other questions and we are available and we'll be happy to answer even detailed questions regarding your specific projects. So thank you for joining us today. Have a good evening and hopefully see some of you in Poland in the future.